Steve Jobs had a way of looking at the world that was different. Let's take a look. I think one of the, the things that really separates us from the high primates is that uh, we're tool builders. And I read a, uh, a study that measured the efficiency of locomotion for various species on the planet. The condor used the least energy to move a kilometer. And uh, humans came in uh, with a rather unimpressive showing about a third of the way down the list. It was not, not uh, too proud of a showing for the crown of creation. So uh, that didn't look so good, but then somebody in Scientific American had the insight to test the efficiency of locomotion for a man on a bicycle. And a man on a bicycle, or a human on a bicycle, blew the condor away, completely off the top of the charts. And that's what a computer is to me. Uh, what a computer is to me is, it's the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with. And it's the equivalent of a bicycle for our minds. Jobs continued to innovate and push the boundaries of technology, even changing the way that music is listened to. Let's take a listen to what Bill Gates had to say about Steve Jobs 25 years after the Macintosh. My question's on Apple. Mr. Gates, if you could just comment and tell us what your thoughts are on the job Steve Jobs has done as the CEO of Apple. <laughs> well, he's done a, a fantastic job. And Apple's in a bit of a different business where they make the hardware and software together. But when Steve was coming back to Apple, which was actually through an acquisition of, of Next that he ran, Apple was in very tough shape. In fact, you know, most likely it, it wasn't going to survive. And he brought in a team. He brought in inspiration about great products and design uh, that's made Apple back into being an incredible force in doing good things. And it's, you know, it's great to have competitors like that. We write software for Apple. Microsoft does. They compete with Apple. Uh, but he, you know, of all the, the leaders in the, the industry that I've worked with, he showed more inspiration and he saved the company. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward. While some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Whether you loved him or hated him, envied him or despised him. Steve Jobs was an individual that changed the face of the world as we know it. Not just technologically, not just monetarily, not just in the fashions and trends that he set, but in the way that he lived his life, in the way that he structured companies. Love him or hate him, Steve Jobs forever changed our world. He was a genius. In so many realms, it is hard to describe. He redefined marketing, advertising, technology, and even trends themselves. Thank you for watching this film. Steve Jobs meant a lot to all of us, and I felt that he 
was due a fair tribute. Please look forward to Truth Teaser's next offering, Absalom, a product so unique Steve Jobs would wish he had invented it if he was still alive. But we do have one more thing. <laughs> so thank you. But there is one last thing I'd like to talk to you about today. Uh, but there is one more thing that I want to talk about. But there is one more thing. You guys have sat through a lot, and I really appreciate it today. And uh, there is one more thing. But there is one more thing. There is one more thing. But there's one more thing. But there is one more thing. But we do have one more thing today. But there is one more thing. But there is one more little thing. But there's one more little thing. So, I got one more thing. We'll see you all soon. Thanks. But we do have one more thing. I'm Steve Jobs. It is 1958. IBM passes up the chance to buy a young fledgling company that has invented a new technology called Xerography. Two years later, Xerox is born, and IBM has been kicking themselves ever since. It is 10 years later the late 60s. Digital equipment, DEC, and others invent the mini-computer. IBM dismisses the mini-computer as too small to do serious computing and therefore unimportant to their business. DEC grows to become a multi-hundred million dollar corporation before IBM finally enters the mini-computer market. It is now 10 years later, the late 70s. In 1977, Apple, a young, fledgling company on the West Coast, invents the Apple II, the first personal computer as we know it today. IBM dismisses the personal computer as too small to do serious computing and unimportant to their business. The early 80s, 81. Apple II has become the world's most popular computer, and Apple has grown to a $300 million company, becoming the fastest growing corporation in American business history. With over 50 competitors vying for a share, IBM enters the personal computer market in November 81 with the IBM PC. 1983. Apple and IBM emerge as the industry's strongest competitors, each selling approximately $1 billion worth of personal computers in 1983. Each will invest greater than $50 million for R&D and another $50 million for television advertising 
in 1984, totaling almost one quarter of a billion dollars combined. The shakeout is in full swing. The first major firm goes bankrupt, with others teetering on the brink. Total industry losses for 83 outshadow even the combined profits of Apple and IBM for personal computers. It is now 1984. It appears IBM wants it all. Apple is perceived to be the only hope to offer IBM a run for its money. Dealers, initially welcoming IBM with open arms, now fear an IBM-dominated and controlled future. They are increasingly and desperately turning back to Apple as the only force that can ensure their future freedom. IBM wants it all and is aiming its guns on its last obstacle to industry control, Apple. Will Big Blue dominate the entire computer industry? The entire information age? Was George Orwell right about 1984? computer will introduce Macintosh, and you'll see why 1984 won't be like 1984. That ad is going to run one week before Macintosh is introduced. And our ad agency that put it together is here today, Shiat Day. Jay Shiat's here, the uh, principal, uh, Lee Clow and Steve Hayden that uh, wrote the copy and did the creative are also here. You might, I guess they just heard what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> 